All right, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be doing a product review and a quick kind of walkthrough of our brand new custom installed air compressor system, all the components associated with it, up to and including the Cox Reels Easy Coil Hose Reel. Man, this thing is awesome. And over there, we got the Amazon version, which is much more affordable, but we kitted it out with top of the line stuff, so it's gonna be super good too. So if you wanna see the full install video, I'll put a link up here and a link down in the description. That's a much lengthier video that covers every bit of installation detail, but this is just going to be talking about the product and how we use it and what we like about it. All right, so without any further delay, let's get after it. Yeah. So let's start out by talking about the power needs for an air compressor in your garage. Now this is only a 15 amp compressor, so realistically you could plug this into any wall outlet and it would be fine but I wanted to run a 20 amp dedicated service to this compressor because I want it to be isolated. Any electrical issues that should arise, I want them to be right here and not affecting shutting off breakers anywhere else in my garage or house. So by running a 20 amp service here, it also enables me to change the compressor later to a larger compressor that might require more power without having to open the wall up, do any electrical work or anything of the sort. We're future-proofed, we're good to go. Now with that being said, there's also a 220 circuit right here that I use for my welder. And uh, if I wanted to get a super giant compressor that required 220, all I'd have to do is swap this plug out, plug it in, and my power requirements are met. I think that's a really good tip for you guys. When you're in there doing electrical work, make sure that you do the electrical work that's gonna last for many years to come and you can change the products around without having to do a bunch of ripping apart the walls and labor to get it done. All right, so that's my thought on the power. Let's talk about the compressor itself. This is a Craftsman Professional model, but let's not kid ourselves. This is not the type of model that you're gonna find in an auto body shop or a paint shop or anything like that. They use enormous compressors that can support four or five workstations. This is more like a prosumer model uh, for, for people's home garages. So with that being said, it did require some modifications to make this work, although they were very simple. So this air compressor comes with an inch and a half inspection port uh, on the side. I removed the original one that came with it and put in this inch and a half one with a female adapter on it. It has a half inch female adapter, which enables me to put the 90 degree elbow on it to run to my half inch compressor line. Now, why do we need that half inch compressor line? The reason is if the air compressor is vibrating, wobbling, I have to move it for some reason. It has plenty of flexibility built into the system so that it's not pulling and tugging on our rigid pipes. We definitely don't want to do that. All right, so now let's talk about the Prevost Air Regulator. Man, this thing is big, commercial, and robust. This is the type of situation that I see can be uh, used daily, weekly, monthly, for many years to come without any problems. To put it in perspective, this is the Amazon model. This is a water separator, and uh, this worked great for me on my Amazon reel for about 10 years. You know, but right from the start, it had a small going on, so it had a little leak. It did its job, it was very affordable, but man, I'll tell you what, this is a place where money was well spent and I'm happy with it. Um, the usability on it, you pull it up a tiny bit, man, you turn this, it's like one pound increments here. I mean, you can fine tune anything you're using and that's pretty important for some of the air compressor needs. So if you want something that's robust, easy to control and micro refinements can be made really easy, this is your, this is your uh, tool right here. So let's keep moving on. Then we got into what I use, the copper pipe. Why did I use copper pipe? I'm over here in Hawaii, shipping is just nuts, you know? So I tried to use a product that was locally available to me. I, you know, I would like to have the nice air piping that looks beautiful and everything and easy, just snap joints and plug and play. This is a lot more labor, but I'll tell you what, I got away pretty cheap. I'm comfortable doing plumbing and soldering. So with that being said, if you're not comfortable soldering joints and doing general plumbing work, copper is not your ticket. So I went ahead with copper for several reasons and I just described those to you. So as we come on up to our, through our copper and uh, we got to where we teed off and we have a female fitting there to our jumper hose to our Cox Easy Coil hose reel. Man, this thing is nice. This is where the fun starts. So let's take a closer look at this. 
All right, so before we get started taking a look at the Cox Reels Easy Coil Air Compressor Hose Reel, I wanted to talk about the different hoses that are available on the market. Now there's a lot of them out there and a lot of people wonder like, what am I gonna get? What's it gonna feel like? How long is it gonna last? I hope I can help you out with that. So one of the cheapest versions out there is PVC. Now this is made out of PVC. It looks like plastic, it smells like plastic, it feels like plastic. The reason I got this was because doing some framing work at my house, I needed several hundred feet of air compressor hose and I didn't want to have to worry about if it got smashed or, or anything like that. So if you need a couple hundred feet of hose and you just want it to be cheap and you don't care if it gets messed up, PVC is the ticket. But would we want this on our hose reel? Absolutely not. It comes in these fluorescent colors and it just feels cheap. The user experience is kind of really low. So overall, good construction hose for tons of length for cheap. That's about it. All right, so let's move on. Here is the Lowe's Home Depot version of a rubber hose. It's quarter inch in size. It's very flexible. I bought it to do finish nailing in the house. I didn't have to worry about it scratching door jams or scratching the floor, anything of the sort. I believe that the claim to fame with this one is if you were to cut it, pinch it, or break it in any way, you just slice it, push it back up onto the hose barb fitting, and you're back in action, making it a really good construction hose. It's small, it's nimble, it doesn't pass a lot of air because it's quarter inch, but overall, a great construction hose. I would say framing nailing, finish nailing, very small projects, very nice hose. For the Cox hose reel, not so much. This is a construction grade hose, uh, not a detailing on an expensive reel, in my opinion. The next hose which caught my eye is the Goodyear slash Continental. I believe they're kind of one and the same now. Uh, 3 8 hose. Now this is a nice rubber hose. It lasted for about 10 years. It came with my compressor. I've used it a ton. Over the years it kind of hardened on me. It got uh, some memory built into it that just won't come out. It starts to feel kind of slimy and, and kind of hard. Uh, but overall I would say it was a very nice hose. If I wasn't going to spend the big money on the hose that I'm about ready to describe to you, this would be my second choice. It's fairly cheap, it's good quality rubber, and um, overall a decent hose. So Goodyear Continental, I would say middle grade, middle price point, and reasonable quality, but not the best. This next hose came on the Amazon hose reel. Now this is 5 8 hose. It has a large diameter, passes a lot of air. The trouble is it's really heavy for its length and it's not very flexible. Although it doesn't kink and it, I mean, by all accounts, it works really well, but it's heavy and not that flexible. And uh, over the years, it did do a little bit of fading, which you can see from just normal wear and tear. But again, I had no problems with it. My recommendation, if you get the Amazon hose reel, Consider leaving it with this hose on there for a while, taking it for a test drive, trying it out. If you find it to be heavy, bulky, and uncomfortable, then upgrade your hose. But if it comes on the reel, you might as well give it a try. It's not that bad, but they're still better. All right, so that's the one that comes on the Amazon hose reel. Decent middle range quality. Now here is the best hose that I have come across yet. Now I have seen some reviews on YouTube and I questioned it at this price point. I thought, man, that's pretty darn expensive. It better be nice. Well, when I pulled it out of the box, I went, wow, super light, super flexible. I mean, fatigue factor, you could be using this all day long and it's just, you, it almost feels like it's not there. It has a good feel to it. Out of the box, it is kind of a sticky rubber and um, it tends to be a little catchy in the hose reel, but I can already feel after several days, this is already kind of smoothed out a little bit and it's feeling really good. So in my opinion, the Prevost Stoflex hose, this is 3 8 in size, and man, it is worth every penny. So if you're questioning what is the best hose out there, in my opinion, right now, it's this. And it, it looks kind of cool too. I like the green. On the little Amazon reel, I kind of call it the Incredible Hulk reel. It, Looks like the Hulk color, so I like it. I'm gonna give this a try for a while and see how it goes, but for right now, user experience, I'm gonna give it a 10 out of 10. It feels great. All right, so I hope that that helps you sort through your search on hoses. There's a lot of them out there, and I know that some of them claim to feel like rubber, look like rubber, flexible, all these things. They're not. <laughs> one thing I can tell you, this one is. 
And my next choice would be the Goodyear Continental Hose as a middle range hose. Other than that, that's all I got to say on hoses. Let's get back to the hose reels. All right. So now let's take a look at this Cox Reels Easy Coil Air Compressor Hose Reel. Man, this thing is sweet. Right off the bat, when I pulled it out of the box, I thought, man, this is large in size. It's, it's heavy. It's thick steel. I mean, it's commercial grade. This is something you would see in a full-blown auto manufacturing business or something where someone's using it nonstop all day, every day for many years. All the parts inside of it are replaceable. I would say if you purchase this, you would own it the rest of your life. There's no question about it. So let's start looking at it and see what the big difference is. So the easy coil version, what does that mean? Easy coil essentially means that when you let it go, it's gonna go super slow. I mean, super slow. <laughs> All right, so there it is. So, uh, man, it's, it's just designed to barely make its way back to the reel. And you can tell on the other reel, man, when you let it go, you better watch out because I'll, it'll take a chip off the paint. It'll take a tooth out of your face if you're not careful. So this one, the way I tend to use it, I'll be over here in the garage and I don't like to drag all my stuff across the ground anyway. So I'll just kind of let it feed back in nice and slow and smooth and put it away. I'm not a fan of just dropping it on the ground and letting it go anyway. So in my opinion, this one reels really slow and the risk level with using it's really low. That's why they call it the Easy Coil Safety Series so, or Safety System. Man, it really works nice in that way. Other than that, I mean, it's just a typical hose reel, heavy gauge, commercial grade, and reels in really slow will last you the rest of your life. Let's take a look at the Amazon version in comparison. Right off the bat, this black reel with the, with the green hose, man, it's got incredible Hulk written all over it. I like it. I use it on this side of the garage to deal with my dirt bikes, my mountain bikes, anything that I'm gonna work on over here, I used a little Hulk to get it done. It also works perfectly down the passenger side of my car. There's a nice little lane. I'm gonna go over the layout of my system here in a minute, but for now, let's just look at the reel itself. What is the difference between the Cox Reels Easy Coil hose reel and the Amazon version? One, price, that one's far more expensive, but in reality, that one reels in super slow. We just saw that, so let's take a look at this one. I'm almost kind of afraid to let it go, but you'll get the idea. I mean, it is like crazy fast. I mean, if we were 30 foot out there and it went whipping in, it would be like a bad golf shot. Four, as the hose goes ripping through, people jumping over it, man, and it back up into the reel. But with that being said, with all my tools, I've used this for 10 years, and I deal with it the same way. I walk it in nice and slow, stow the hose up there, and it's fine. Is it a deal breaker? Absolutely not. And at this price point, I feel like that it's, it's a good hose reel on a budget. I did outfit it with the Stoflex hose, all the cool fittings, so the user experience is 10 out of 10. The only real difference is it's smaller, residential quality, not commercial. You're not gonna find this in the Chevy plant, I can tell you right now. This is garage use, but overall, a real good option at this price point. So it's something that I like, and I'm gonna keep it here in the garage, and I'll keep you posted if anything changes over the years. But for right now, 10 years, still going strong, looks brand new. I like it, yeah. All right, so when I designed the garage, I was thinking to myself, I want the hose reel right in the center of this lane that's available once we pull the car into the garage. So if I need to use the hose reel for anything, I just pull it out and man, I come right down the middle. I can use it however I want to on this vehicle. Now we have another one on the pasture side with this same type of lane over there. So we can use it for anything we have to on that side. When it comes time to put it away, All right, and there it is. That's a wrap. That's why I wanted it where it's at. All right, so now we've talked about hose quality, hose reel quality, and the differences between all of them. Now let's talk about the quick disconnect fittings that go on the end of the hoses. The Prevost quick disconnect system is really neat. It's got this green button. The first time you push it, it disconnects, but the, but the tool cannot come off. Once you release the button, now the tool can be removed. So you don't have that 
it flying off and landing halfway down the road or if you're up on a ladder working your tool dropping all the way to the ground to put it back on just push it on so again press the button it comes off and discharges the air now when we release the button the tool comes right off that's a safety system also so it's kind of nice with this compressed air to consider safety. We don't want tools flying across the, the, the garage. We don't want hoses whipping across the garage. We try to keep our workspace safe. So in my opinion, the Prevo safety disconnect is really killer. So here's what original types look like. They're just stainless steel. And look, you can tell I got tons of hours on this. Right away when I plugged this in earlier today to take a, take a test run on it, it was hissing. It's got about a 20% fail rate where it slightly hisses. The quality is kind of, you know, marginal at best. It's corroding. Uh, it's ugly and it doesn't feel that good. So right off the bat, I'm going to say this is kind of typical and not that great. And in comparison, you're going to pay some extra money, but boy, this one is great. Look at the ergonomics on that thing. It's even got finger wells built into it. Man, it is just really a good feeling there. And you got the rubber boot covering all the fittings. Just really nice high-end fitting here that, we, that you'll be enjoying for many years. So that's all there really is to say about the quick disconnects. Oh, one last thing. The green symbolization on the Prevost, that's a European model. And the real difference is it's a high flow. It has a larger orifice than, than typical. I, I don't really need to use every single cubic feet per minute that comes through my system. But for some that are trying to get the most flow, the European model will do it. It also matches the green and looks really cool. That's why I got these for mine. I don't need the flow, but it looks cool. And why not have the flow while we're at it? So uh, that's all I got to say about the air quick disconnects. Pretty cool. Another one that I thought was worth the money. These aren't cheap. But the user experience for many years to come is going to be 10 out of 10. And that's kind of what we're looking for. Let's think about it. We got to be out here working on our cars, working on our bikes, detailing, whatever we're doing. The only thing that we're really getting to experience is the end product here. So if it's a good experience, we're happy. If it's a bad experience, we're frustrated. And I kind of want this experience to be the best it can be. So I want to use the best quality components within my budget to do it. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and plug a few things in and test it out and see how it really works. All right. All right, so let's start off by talking about the Prevost uh, blow tool, man. That thing, I'll tell you what, the ergonomics on this your, your, goes right up in the palm of your hand. Your fingers go around and lay in the finger well. Your fingers are right on the trigger. And I'll tell you right now, with the flexible hose, and this user experience, man, it's high. It's really high. So let's compare it to the others. This is your typical air blow tool. Man, it's just janky. It's kind of rough feeling, metal. It almost feels like if I accidentally pulled too hard, I would just bust this thing. Does it work? Absolutely. It's a decent tool. You know, this was in my garage for many years and I can't count how many times I used it, but it's got a metal tip. Boy, you scratch it against the side of a car, uh, scratch it against a plastic interior, anything like that, you're gonna wish that you got the safety one that has a nice smooth plastic. Now, is this scratch proof? Absolutely not. I, you can scratch paint with your fingertip. So be careful touching anything, but we don't want things that are excessively easy to scratch with, like a metal component like that. So in my opinion, this blow tool is really awesome. So. I like it. Let's try something different on here. Again, we'll just press the button. Now it's not going to come off no matter what you do, which is really neat. I release the button, comes right off. I wanted to share this with you guys. The Steelman air filler tool, whatever you want to call it. Man, this thing is just amazing. You know, when we used, uh, when we pump up our dirt bike tires, we're looking at super low PSI, three to five pounds on the outer tube, up to 100 PSI on the inner tube. And I'll tell you what, man, this thing does perfect measurements all the way down to almost nothing, all the way up above 100 PSI. Super flexible hose, very easy to press on. Works just insanely good. Man, this is the best air fill tool valve I've ever seen in my life. This is something that you would see in a tire shop or a commercial uh, situation as well. So, all right, so again, press the button. Nothing's coming off. As soon as we let go, tool comes right off. 
I'll tell you what, at first I thought to myself, oh, that's kind of hokey, what's the point? It really does work nice though. So you don't have to worry about dropping your tools all over the place. They can be expensive, we don't want to break them. Now again, we'll watch how slow this thing retracts. Nothing, no big deal. Okay, so let's talk about this air release valve on the bottom of the tank that's made to drain the water out. I can tell you right now, I can't believe that I waited so many years to get this. What a cool solution, no more reaching underneath. You just gotta be careful with 150 PSI on a flexible hose. If we crank this valve all the way open, it's gonna take off. So I like to crack it open nice and slow and make sure that it's not gonna go anywhere. But it's gonna get loud, so I'll turn it off when I do this. If you have any questions about my system, any of the pipe work, any of the compre anything that I've talked about today, feel free to leave a comment down below asking the question. That's one of my favorite parts about the channel is dealing with all the questions, helping people get their garage the way they want it. It really uh, makes me happy to see other people fixing up their garage too. So if you have any tips or tricks that you've done in your garage that you think that the viewers could benefit from, Leave those down in the comments too. Everybody appreciates it. And of course, we want you to subscribe to the channel so that you can see more content like this. We love all of our subscribers. And hit that like button. That helps move us up in the ranking. So if you enjoyed the video, you hit the like button. YouTube says, oh, other people will probably enjoy it too. So it'll show it to other people. And that really helps us out at the channel. Now, if you have... Um, Anything that you want to take a look at, I've put links down in the description for you. Go ahead and take a look at them. Obviously, if you buy something, it helps out the channel. But if you just want to take a look so that you can organize your setup, that's awesome too. We just want to help people out. So with that being said, we'll see you on the next one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah.